Well, look, there's very little doubt that the way fans are going to get their sports in the future, in the near future some places, in the medium future other places, is through a streaming service. It's a superior technology. It's not does not have to be linear. You can do multiple games. You can have a one-on-one relate one-on-one relationship with your customer. As the infrastructure gets get built out, it's a superior video experience. So it's the future of sports viewing. How does that play into the live aspect of sports, and what kind of infrastructure does it take to be able to compete with the traditional over-the-counter or, or uh, live? Broadcast? Well, it takes uh, a lot of infrastructure, and that infrastructure is not there right now. The Ability to stream concurrently to large numbers of people can only be done by a few services, including our service zone. We have the ability to stream up to 10 million live concurrent viewer to 10,000, 10 million live concurrent viewers. Which, as far as I know, there's only two or three companies in the world that can do that. So, who do you see as your biggest competitors? Then is the question. Be, our biggest competitor is anybody who's bidding for sports rights. Because ultimately, we have a very simple business, unlike the business of entertainment where you have to invent new dramas and comedies or tell show, reality shows or game shows. We simply have to get the rights to the sporting events that people care about. What did your experience at ESPN teach you about this sort of new world that's full of data and online? Um, what, do you, what have you brought to the Look, world Look, what I brought is not the new world of data. What I brought is understanding that live sports is the most valuable content in the media universe because people care passionately about it and because they are unique events that cannot be replicated. So if you have the game they want to watch, you're in business. I am learning at the zone about the technology of how to deliver that and then the advantage of having a one-to-one -one relationship and data on your customer. So let's talk a little bit about growth areas. What markets are you do you see as the biggest opportunity right now, and, and what sports are associated with those um, globally? Look, what we have to do is look at each market individually and have a specific strategy. In Japan, which is our largest service, it was fortunate that the largest live events were available, Japanese baseball, Japanese football. In Italy, we ended up with a circumstance where the Serie A was available. In the United States, where many of the rights are locked up, we are using boxing as our entry point. We're interested in every market around the world. You need broadband infrastructure. You need rights available. You need uh, uh, current. You need enough people with enough means to subscribe to a service. So we are looking. Uh, we're in seven countries now. We're looking at another 20, 25 countries that we hope over the next 18 months will be launched in. And when it comes to that U.S. boxing market, can you talk about your plans there and what, what you hope to um, achieve? Look, what we did was sign Canelo Alvarez. He is the single most important fighter in the United States. In his last three fights, he sold 3.6 million pay-per-views for a total of $250 million. So we have identified a group of fans who are willing to pay real money to watch a sporting event. They paid about $250 million at $80 a pop. So we think that's a pretty good place to start, get those same people to spend $10 a month on a subscription service. And do you see that deal as a sort of framework for other kind of big names being able to bring in that for viewership and that audience? Ultimately, yes. This is a unique situation. The United States, unlike every market in the world, has very long-term rights deals. So boxing was one of the ways we could get in. And it's the first time anybody has put on a streaming service the best content from a sport. It still tends in the United States to be downstream content. Hey everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.